If you have this knot in between your shoulder blades, that could be because of a number of things. It could be because you have scoliosis. It could be because you have poor tissue quality around this area in the upper spine, shoulder blades, and the shoulder joint. And the goal is not to just manage that symptom, but to train the whole system to become stronger. First of all, knot is layman language for trigger points, and trigger points are poorly defined and largely unsupported by scientific investigation. And knot is just layman language for this poorly defined, highly unsupported phenomena. Because when you say a knot, you think you have to jam a trigger point ball into it to open up the knot, but that's not the case. You just need to increase tissue quality all around these areas, and it always starts at the joint. Because movement starts at your joint, and it works its way out. In this video, I'm gonna show you one of the many different ways that we can strengthen all these areas so all these niggles and these issues will go away. If it's your first time here and you don't know me, my name is Ravi. Find me on Instagram, at the supple athlete, so you can kind of know what I do for a living. I help people move better. Because when you move better and create more capable joints, less likely that your movements are gonna falter and if your movements falter less, you're just gonna feel better overall and be on the pursuit of becoming pain-free. Because joint pain sucks. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first exercise is gonna be about the T-spine, okay? Now what I want you to do here is completely have your arms overhead. You can kind of pull your rib cage down a little bit so you can feel the upper portion of the chest on the ground, but relax everything. Take a deep breath and relax. Now, the lower back will get involved, right? A little bit, but the intent is keep the glutes and the lower back out of it as much as you can. If that's impossible for you, you are certainly welcome to put a pillow underneath your stomach and that kind of helps. But what we're essentially trying to do here is we're trying to peel off feeling tension start in between the shoulder blades and a little bit lower once we peel off. So you're gonna first Take the neck back, lift it. You can use your hands to press into the floor so you can decrease the weight of your torso so you can find this tension here better. And I want you to relax the bottom half and then keep extending. When you extend, think about your sternum. Think about a hook attached to your sternum. You're trying to pull on that hook and try to get that extension. Get these vertebrae closer together. Okay, try to relax the lower back. It's involved a little bit, but the glutes are completely relaxed. Once we get here, we're gonna hold it for a one minute count. Don't go max effort, right? 30% of your maximum effort, we're gonna hold it for one whole minute, and then we slowly go down. Maintain your attention throughout the process. Keep it steady, try to visualize all the vertebrae getting closer together for another 35 seconds. consciously thinking about relaxing the lower back and your butt and your legs, okay? Some people need to kind of tuck their chin. You're not doing anything wrong, by the way, but some people need to tuck their chin so they can feel this a little bit, like elongating the neck and then pulling back so you can just feel more of the upper spine. Now slowly allow everything to drop down. Great. So that was an isometric, just to, for you to feel what you need to feel. The next thing, what we're gonna do, is a passive range hold. We've done it for shoulders and the hips here many times, if you've been following us. For, but the, for the spine is like this. You're gonna pull this here, and you, you're gonna use the ground, right, to kind of press your arms into a little bit, and then you're gonna think about and this is not 90, this is full, more forward. So it's just, um, it just contracts the upper back. And you're, from this position, you're gonna think about driving, um, attached, think about a hook attached to your clavicle, and I'm kind of pulling on that hook. So you're creating some passive extension using the ground, 
and both creating like an arching effect of your upper back. Once we reach here and you feel that sensation and that tension you felt in the previous exercise, then you're going to create tension. Don't use your glutes and your legs at all because I don't want your lower back involved at, at all. But try to squeeze and contract the tissues you feel and remove the passive support. If you're doing it right, you should be going down a little bit because a lot of people hold everything and they, they, they don't go down. And predominantly, it goes in their lower back. So, it's just the upper back. Relax the glutes, the legs don't come out. You just create this. When I say remove, you remove the passive support. You hold it for a five second count, relax, and then rinse and repeat. We're gonna do five second holds for five reps. Afterwards, we're gonna go immediately into lift off. So you're gonna just peel off, find that end, slowly go down for five reps. Okay, let's get it. Relax this, think about I'm pulling on your sternum, your sternum and your chest bone is going towards the other side of the room. You feel that tension here? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Now remove the passive support. Don't use, you don't use your glutes. Just remove the passive support and hold it. One, two, relax this. Three, four, five, and relax. Good. You see, they wanted to use his glutes right away. And you guys will want to as well. Don't, okay? This is an upper back movement. Find that passive stretch. Take your time here, okay? Position your arms in a different position than Nate's. And then find that passive stretch in between the shoulder blades. And then remove the passive support. Don't think about the glutes, even if you go down quite a bit. Remove it. Remove the hands. One, two, relax. Three, four, and five. Good. Excellent. Again, find that passive stretch. Have your arms over when you remove the passive support. I want your hands completely off the ground. Relax this and go. One, two, relax. Three, four, and five. Good, see? Again, two more reps. Let's go. Remove the passive support, relax. One, two, three, four, and five. One more. Wait. Extend, find that passive, and let's remove the passive support for one, two, three, four, and five. Excellent. Now, arms overhead. We're going to just do the liftoffs. Create tension. Now peel off. Find that tension here. Slowly start to get these closer together. Closer together. If you need to press your hands into the floor, just to create decrease the weight on your torso, that's good. Once you find the tension here, just slowly go back down. If this position is uh, painful for your arms, you can have it at 10 and 2. You don't have to have it fully overhead like this. Wonderful. Squeeze, find that, and then go down. That was the third one or the second one? Second. All right, three more. Fine, get these closer together, closer. Nice work, slowly go down. Again. So the fourth one, get closer. And go down. Again. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then go down. Fantastic. Now we're going to do a similar thing for flexion, which is the other motion, other fundamental motion of the spine, but we're going to really focus on the T-spine here. And the way that works is that when you lay down here, the spine has a natural curvature. It kind of looks like an S. So your lower back shouldn't be smashed into the floor. 
Some people's will be because if you have a higher body fat percentage and you have more meat here, you're going to feel your back on the floor, but you don't necessarily want to push your lower back down into the floor by bringing your pelvis up, right? Just let this bottom half be to do what it wants to do. From here, what we're going to do, we're going to, I'm going to tuck the chin in just like that neck video that we did. You're going to tuck the chin in into your throat, create flexion in the neck, and it's going to be hard for me to even talk. Right? And then I'm going to peel my vertebrae, my spine, off the ground one vertebrae at a time. And as I do this, it looks like an ab exercise, but I'm not pushing this down so I can get as high up as I can. Right? The goal is just to create that peel off motion in the upper spine all the way to here and then hold this contraction. You're going to feel it in your abs for about a minute. If you can't hold it for a minute, that's okay. Hold it for 30 seconds. And then we're going to squeeze everything and then we're going to go back down. As I go back down, I'm going to go back down like this. I'm not just going to drop. I'm going to keep everything tight. Go back down one vertebrae at a time like this. Then we're going to do five reps of peel offs, right? Segmental flexion and then going back. Segmental flexion and then going back. Then we're going to do some shoulder blades. Let's get it. All right. Let's go. Let's fucking go. All right, go. Tuck. So first, when you tuck, don't lift the head. Just tuck as much as you can. Now lift the head. There you go. Squeeze and peel. There you go. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to get a cramp there. You got a cramp? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get a cramp. You might get a cramp. That's fine. That means it's working. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, let's get them. Flex. There you go. And don't go to a point of the cramp if it's cramping every time. Just peel off here. Everything here is relaxed. Just peel, 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 peel. You got a little bit more. As soon as you feel your lower back wanting to, your pelvis starting to shift forward, then stop and hold. Constantly drive this chin into your throat. Yes, see, because that helps. That helps with that upper, upper segment. Lose height. There you go. Hold. Create tension. We're at 20 seconds, folks. Let's get it. Let's see what you're made of. I mean, he has a much longer spine than I do, so it's not fair. Flex. Yes. Tuck. Chin. 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 Yes. See? There you go. Almost there. Don't lose that tuck. Yes, you're going to be torched by now. Any of you folks that can hold it for a minute, it's fine. Keep the chin tucked. Now, we're done in five seconds. Go down segmentally. Keep the chin tucked as fuck. And then go down slowly. Yes. And the last thing that untucks is the neck. Hallelujah. Rest, let's rest for 30 seconds. And then we're gonna do five repetitions of peel offs, okay? When you do the five repetitions of peel off, same scenario, you flex the neck, you peel off. Imagine your, the first position that you feel on the ground is your spine and you're trying to peel it off the ground like a banana peel, like one vertebrae at a time, like Velcro. Pop, 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 pop. And then on the way back, retrace the steps. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's go. Flex. Tuck. Yes. Do not let anything happen in the lower back region. We're trying to really isolate that T-spine, make it round. Yes. And then once you're at your end, squeeze and then go back. Nice work. Let's get him. 
and there's this exercise is not going to directly, uh, you know, open the knot in between your shoulder blades. <clears throat> this exercise is going to make your spine strong. The other exercises we're going to do is going to make your shoulder blades and the surrounding tissues responsible for the movement of the shoulder blades strong and then your rotator cuffs and the, the surrounding tissues of your shoulder joint strong. And when all of these are strong, you're gonna create a healthier environment. Your body has more options to utilize tissues to do a specific task. It doesn't have to overuse one thing and not use a large surface area. <clears throat> because movement starts at your joint and it works its way out. When the joint is working right, so, the, so are the surrounding tissues. Flex, 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 Good. What number are we at? That was three. That was three. Two more reps. <clears throat> and not is such a stupid term. It's basically layman language for trigger points. And trigger points are very poorly defined and largely unsupported via scientific investigation. Um, so, you know, it, it's because when you say not, you think that somebody needs to get in there and open the knot. That's not the case. You just have poor tissue quality there. Okay, great. One more. Let's go. Hallelujah. Slow. There we go. Good. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to do some shoulder blade work. Okay. So for the shoulder blade, let's just first go through this motion through the cars because a lot of people are unfamiliar with it and it's going to be hard for them to just actually find what we needed to, need them to find. So for the shoulder blades, so the shoulder blade glides on your rib cage, and uh, we want you to protract the shoulder blade, it's gliding forward, elevate, retract, and depress, right? As you do this, I don't want your neck to extend and your spine to extend. The movement should be just coming from the shoulder blade. Try your best. That means maybe you have to decrease the range of motion you think you have control over. So let's just do three reps per direction per arm. Right, one arm at a time, and then we're gonna get into that base position. So be on this side angle, perfect. And then arm, so let's get in a kneeling position and arm is gonna go straight out, great. From here, yeah, yeah, you can go a little bit more in the middle. From here, have the arm forward, and you can do this in a seated position too. So push this arm forward fully. Great. Now, elevate and see how as it elevates is one straight line. It doesn't get like this, okay? Now drive this back. Pause. Now drive it down. Excellent, like that. So two more reps with this direction. Let's go forward, pause, take your time. Elevate, drive your shoulder up to your ears, drive back down, forward, up, back, down, pause. Now we're going to retrace the steps. Up, forward, down, back, up, forward, down, back. One more. Forward, down, back. There we go. Excellent. You did a phenomenal job. Now, uh, let's rotate. Oops, shit. And uh, go from there. I hate that lamp. <laughs> All right. Go a little bit more forward in the middle. Por favor. Thank you. All right. Let's get them. Hands forward. First, it's in a neutral position, push forward all the way. Elevate, retract, and depress. 
push it forward, elevate, retract, and depress. One more, forward, elevate, retract, and depress. Now let's retrace our steps. Let's elevate, go forward, depress, and retract. Elevate, go forward, depress, and retract. One more, elevate, forward, depress, and retract. Fantastic, great. Now you know what I mean when I say push it forward, protract, okay? So first motion we're gonna do is the protraction. And the way we're gonna do that is you're gonna get in this position. And uh, again, don't put this here so your lower back is really involved if that's the case. Mine isn't in this position. I feel it, but it's not predominantly involved and it's not bugging me. So if that's the case with you, you can change the position of your arms an infinite number of ways. So it, it, this, you feel it in the right spot. The, where, where we wanna feel it, we're gonna feel it in the serratus, mm -hmm. right? You wanna feel it here. So when I ask you guys to just protract, right? I want you to really feel everything here working. And I'm gonna ask you to drive and protract into the floor, feel the tension there. 30% of your maximum tension only. And then we're gonna hold that 30% for a minute. Afterwards, I'm gonna ask you to retract. Hold that 30% of your maximum intensity for a whole minute. Afterwards, we're gonna go in the quadruped position. If you wanna make it more challenging, we can lift it up and uh, do our scapula cars, okay? Just exactly what we did here, but with both arms on the ground for a little bit of a challenge, okay? You can do it in a push-up position eventually. You can do it with a dumbbell eventually, which is a different stimulus. But this is the way you challenge it. This is the way you make the tissue stronger. But you, may, you have to make sure that you understand what tissues you are making stronger. So that's why we're doing these, these drills. So let's get them. Okay. Relax everything first. A couple breaths, you know. And then press protract into the floor. Let the shoulder blades glide out. Feel it in the serratus muscles. Hard. And hold. 30% of your MVC, maximum voluntary contraction. I'm gonna hold it for a minute. Don't lose tension in the serratus, right? That's important. Feel the space being created right here, right? And some of you guys might have a very hard time feeling that. And no wonder this tissue here is just overworked because you have no strength here in these tissues, right? Especially if you're only doing bench presses and you know, push-ups and shit like that, you don't necessarily use the part of your pecs and these tissues that are responsible for these emotions. So yeah, they're gonna be underused, they're gonna be underdeveloped, and your body's not gonna wanna use them when you're doing shit that requires these tissues to assist in that movement. Wonderful. Now let's just squeeze them back together into retraction and just imagine you're squeezing the tag of your shirt, not at your max capacity, only at 30%. You're gonna feel so good after this. I promise it's a guarantee, as a matter of fact. If you do it right. Thirty-five seconds left. Relax the butt. <laughs> it wants to twitch. <laughs> it wants to be involved with the butt. It's not invited to the party, your butt. Just leave it, leave it where it belongs, down there. 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, relax. That was great. 
Now, let's go into quadruped position um, and uh, do our scapula cars. Now, I'll totally leave that up to you how you want to do it. If you want to do it in the elevated quadruped position, whatever you want to call it, do it like that. If you just do it in the regular quadruped, do it like that. You can do half that, half this. Let's give it a try. This one? Because I normally do it in quadruped. So yeah. Sounds a little more challenging? Yeah, it's just a little bit more challenging because there's more weight to okay. push. That's it. It's just a little bit more weight. All right, let's go. We're going to do, if you're doing the elevated, two reps per direction. If you're doing the, um, the other one, let's do three reps per direction. Okay, let's go. And then you can add volume to it, just like any other form of training. So let's lift. Now, find the serratus first before you do anything. Push forward, protract, protract down. No, no, that's retraction. Yeah, push, 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 push. Yes, hold, elevate all the way to your ears. Yes, squeeze back. Yes, depress. Excellent, push forward, find your serratus. Elevate, squeeze back, depress. Now retrace your steps, elevate, protract, depress, and retract. Elevate, protract, depress, retract. Great. Relax. That was great. Okay. Now this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a drill of um, external rotation, just one set, a drill of internal rotation, just one set. And then uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're just gonna do a rotator cuff exercise and we're gonna burn it out with super set with the cars. So the external rotation drill will be this. We're gonna, let me just grab my yoga blocks. Yeah, it's all over the place. Now we're going to go external rotation drill. We're going to do it bilaterally. We're going to go here. A lot of people, when they do this, their shoulder is up. Relax everything. Plant yourself on the floor. And the external rotation drill we do, you do it from here, Nate, is that I drive this down. I immediately start. I don't hold a two-minute stretch, so don't go here if that's your end range. Be a little bit... Um, underneath your end range, or even you can start from here, or you can even start from here if you don't have that much capacity. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna first start with a positional isometric, which is all pails only, and that looks like you driving this fist down into this block, and we start at 10%, we work our way up to a max effort intensity, and we're holding there for 10 seconds. So you're essentially trying to internally rotate, but because your arms are here, you're isometrically loading it without anything moving. And we're going to start there, drive in 100%, hold it, safest, greatest effort, hold it for 10 seconds. Afterwards, you're going to just try to lift off, find your end, fight for some more. I want you to clear some space. So if you don't lift off from here, you're on the ground. You're on a book. You're on something a little bit elevated, okay? Um, and then we're going to lift off for eight reps. Afterwards, we're just going to get in this sideline position. And we're going to do an eccentric in internal rotation. See where you are in internal rotation. So if you're here, we want to start the eccentric from here. So 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. By the time you're five, you're at your end range, right? Afterwards, axial rotations. Then we're going to do that rotator cuff exercise. Let's get them. There we go. So let's go 90. Okay, so let me lift this guy up. All right, you guys ready? Let's go 10%, drive down into the floor. And when I say 10%, don't go 100, right? Very gentle load. If this position causes you pain, decrease the angle. Don't ever push through any pain in any exercise. 20%, 30%, 40%, 
50 percent. 60, create tension everywhere. Now you can squeeze your butt. The moment you've been waiting for. <laughs> Let's go 70 percent. Let's go 80. Give me your safest, greatest effort, and then hold for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do liftoffs for one. So I'm going to decrease this and go down. Let's go number two. Find your end. Fight for some more. Fight, 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 fight. That's two. Good. Find your end. Fight for some more. Fight, 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 fight. That's three. Find your end. Fight for some more. Fight, fight, fight. Four. Let's go number five. Hell yeah. Good. Five more. Let's go one. Perfect. Let's go two. Excellent. Let's go three. Nice work. Let's go four. Let's go five. And relax. Perfect. Good. Now what we're going to do, we're going to get in that sideline position. I'll have this here. When you get in this position, though, let me explain this quickly. Um, when you get in this position, everything is stacked. So don't be like this. And you don't want to completely be laying on this shoulder. Allow the shoulder blade, actually, to be a little bit free. But use that serratus muscle to pin it down, right? And then we start from here. 1,001, 1,002. And I'm resisting this with this hand, but I'm letting this win. There's not a huge resistance. So 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. But you don't have to go here. If you're here, start here and do it here. And then afterwards, external rotation, internal rotation, five reps, so the other way. Okay, let's get it. Bend both knees a little bit too. Both knees, yeah, there we go, like this. Okay, ready? Let's first check and test to see where you are. So this is the end usually, right? But pin the shoulder blade down. Okay, so you see how the shoulder blade is up? Just pin it down a little bit. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Let me just elevate this too. Okay, so we pin down, use your serratus, but relax this, just the serratus is active, and then let's see how far it goes. So that's it, okay? So when you're here, we're gonna start from here. I'm gonna push, resist it, but let me win. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, relax everything, go back. Ready? Let's go. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. Very good. Three more reps. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. Excellent. Two more reps. Let's go 1,001, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Two more or one more? One, two, three, Four, five. Good. Let's go. Last one. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. Way more. Now create tension everywhere like your life depends on it. Go all the way into external rotation. Imagine you're moving through thick honey. Drive, 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 and then go to internal rotation. Find your end. Fight for some more. Don't let this pop up. Hold the serratus. Yes. Go back. All the way, all the way, all the way. Good. Go forward. Two. Back, 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 back. Drive, 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 drive. And then forward. Squeeze through. Yes. Two more reps, 
and then we'll do the other side. We originally planned for this video not to be more than 25 minutes. Let's see, let's see at the end of it how, um, how much time has passed. What do you think is so far? 45. 45? All right, let's see. I'll, I'm saying 33 <laughs> at this moment. Oh, so, yeah, at this moment it's 33. Right. Let's go. 20 bucks. <laughs> All right, good. Let's go switch to the other side. Because, like, there's so many things I want to give, <laughs> but I'm also trying to keep it condensed. Okay, so let's go here. Pin the shoulder blade down. Yeah, good. And then I'm going to go. I'm going to force down, don't let me. Ready? 1,001, 1,002, 3, 4, and 5. Let's go. 1,001. A little bit more resistance. 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, and 5. Let's go. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, and 1,005. Okay, two more. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. Okay, last one. 1,001, if you're a jiu-jitsu guy, it's a game changer. 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, and 1,005, relax. Okay, now let's go all the way back. Drive, drive, drive. Yes, go forward. One, go back. Go forward. That's two. three. Back, back, back. Let's go four. Back, back, back. And forward. Phenomenal. Excellent. Now, I'm going to give you an ankle weight. Oh, fucking spider. Spider no more. All right, so we're going to do... We're going to grab this guy, okay? And you're going to put it around the wrist. And you're going to sit like this. If you can't sit like this, you can sit on a chair or put a block underneath, okay? From here, you're just gonna go all the way back, all the way forward, control it. We're gonna try and aim for 75 seconds per side, okay? If 75 seconds is super easy, we're gonna bump it up to 90 seconds, okay? Afterwards, we're just gonna finish up with some good old cards in the quadruped position, okay? Let's get them. I'm gonna grab your phone because my phone is dead to time. Hey George. Hey Bobo. Okay. You wanna now you can come if you want. Alright, ready? Okay, so anchor it. Kind of like inside. There we go. Ready? Let's go. All the way inside. And all the way outside. Out, 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 drive, 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 drive. All the way inside. And then turn yourself a little bit. And then all the way outside. Push, 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 push. And out. Take your time. It doesn't matter how many reps you do. It just matters that you continuously 
challenge that motion. We're at 40 seconds. All the way out. There we go. Let it go internal. Let's go external. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Is it burning yet? All right. The goal is not to go to absolute failure here though. So keep that in mind. And you don't have to do it with the weight or you don't have to do it with a five pound weight. You can do it with a heavier weight and work your way up. We're at 75 seconds. Maybe we should move to 90. 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Hallelujah. Switch to the other side. How's that? Good. Okay. And these are annoying too. You can hold them like this sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Let's go external and internal. Keep going. Let's just have it a rotational pause and go back up. Yes. Let's go back down, pause, and pull up. There we go. Drive. One minute left. I feel like the fact that I told you one minute is left makes it made it harder. <laughs> There we go. Forty five seconds. Thirty seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Okay. Now, let's get in a tall kneeling position like this. We're going to just finish up with some good old cars. So, cars, okay. If you haven't seen the cars video, what are you doing? Go see the cars video because it's one of the most important things to build awareness everywhere. But if you have, then you know what we're going to do. So, but I'll explain to you in case you haven't seen the cars video. So for, everything is moving from the upper arm bone, right? We're really trying to create that rotation and move that shoulder in all the positions possible. You want to create tension. First, we externally rotate everything, okay? And then this upper arm bone moves towards your midline. Okay, and then you're gonna go up. When you go up, allow the shoulder blade to elevate. And then from here, we're gonna drop down, pause here, internally rotate this guy just a little bit, and then you drop down and you rotate more. And keep rotating. Keep challenging that rotation. And then retrace the steps. Find your end, once you reach a roadblock, externally rotate, and then go all the way down. Great. We're going to do two more reps. Give me external rotation, forward, lift, see how Nate's torso, go for it. It's not moving at all, only the only thing that's moving is the shoulder. Rotate, rotate. Once you get here, even challenge that rotation just a little bit more, feel it, and then retrace. Push this arm back, externally rotate. Go forward. Nice work. Give me one more rep. This is one of the best things you can do for your shoulders daily, right? 
A lot of people are doing them wrong though, and they're showing you how to do them wrong. But this is how to do it right. You have to really isolate how this upper arm bone is moving without allowing your torso, your spine, and all of these other things that really want to get involved to get involved. You have to move this shoulder in isolation. And this is going to help you build awareness and it's going to work all of these surrounding tissues that are responsible for these motions. Good. Now, let's go and uh, do your right side. Create tension, externally rotate, let's move forward. Internal rotation. Keep rotating, keep rotating, keep rotating. Pause here. Give me a little bit more. Uh -huh. And then retrace. And you might get cracking and popping that, you know, it's fine. As long as it's not accompanied by pain, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. It kind of feels good too. The more joint-specific work, like pails and rails in these end range positions that you work on, the more buttery and the less popcorny your joints are gonna feel. And there's nothing wrong with hearing a pop or two. Retrace. One last one after this and we're good to go. Okay, there we go. Internally rotate. And then retrace your steps. There you have it. You asked. I mean, you didn't ask. I just wanted to make a video from it for it. But a lot of people are complaining about this knot. It's not a specific exercise that we did is going to equal to no knot. It's it's the combination of all we did, creating strength in your upper spine, letting it work like an upper spine, allowing the joints to segment and giving you that awareness. Your shoulder, creating strength there in these ranges of motion. Your shoulder blade, allowing it to glide freely and understanding how these things move independently from one another and how they can move together. It's going to put you on the right track so you don't have these issues and niggles in your body. Obviously, there's so many other things you can do. You have to do your cars daily. You have to take your strength and conditioning seriously, and you just gotta be active and don't spend your, most of your time in certain postures. There's no, no such thing as good or bad posture. Your worst posture is the one you spend most of your time in. So if you spend most of your time in this position, then you need more extension. If you spend most of your time in extension, then you're gonna need more flexion. Don't make it complicated, just create more movement. Motion is the lotion for your joints. And I hope you enjoyed this class half as much we enjoyed creating it for you. Until next time, stay supple. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and send it to someone who desperately needs it. Peace.